what Paul said, you've got to learn to be all things to all men. And sometimes this is part of the all things. I guess you have to just make adapt and, you know, adapt a little bit and, and adjust to, to whatever's going to happen. I, I don't want to be a stick in the mud, do you? No way. Uh, no, we should put on a sign somewhere, no stick in the mud. <laughs> no way. We're not going to have that. Praise God. And you know what? There's a lot of things that we're learning and we're growing in. And one of them is maybe we talked about this banner. I don't want to forget it. What kind of banner? Well, we get the banner over us. It's love. But we got what other kind of banner do we have? The banner of? Okay. What kind of banner do we have? The banner rest, amen. And we're learning about this rest. And uh, it, this rest does not mean inactivity. This rest does not mean doing nothing. In fact, I think a lot more is happening during the time that we're entering the rest. Can you say amen? Because the truth of the matter is, dear ones, when we rest, he works. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we, we've understood that. And, you know, another interesting thing that I learned in the process of, of this rest, I've been studying it, it, reminds me that the first day that man had on the earth was the day of what, church? The first day man had on the earth, the seventh day, was the day of... <laughs> Okay, it was a day of rest. So, you know, the Lord gets everything done. All the animals in place, everything's all finished. The plants are beautiful and everything's wonderful. And he makes man and uh, then he says, okay, here's your first day. And we're going to rest. <laughs> we're going to rest. So, you know, that should tell us something. And what he wants us to know is that he wants to do these things. He wants to do his work in his way. And boy, I tell you what, I want him to do it that way too. Can you say amen? You can't beat it. Whatever he's got in mind for you is going to always, always be the very best thing. And now Roxanne's going to be telling us more about this, uh, the flags and what happened. But one of the things that's interesting, if you read the scripture, first, uh, the second chapter, excuse me, of Acts, it talks about all of these places. It lists a lot of places. And the scripture says that they were there from all over the earth. And they were all there abling to speak in various kinds of languages. We're going to talk some more about that in a little bit. But I love that idea of the flags. And, uh, you know, one of the things we saw when we went down to Dr. Malky's Center down Southern California, and, and he's got the flags up, and it was there for all the time. They never took them down because it represented the world that God is speaking to and working in. And listen, he can speak in any language. Can you say amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, listen, Roxanne uh, has been doing some preparing, and I'm looking forward to hear what she's got to say. Aren't you? All right, let's welcome Roxanne. Come on, Pastor Roxanne, and minister to us. Testing, one, two. We don't really need a piano. What are you doing? For what? I, I don't think I need a stand. There's a kind of tape on the bottom. Look at it. It says this stand is for the that microphone. Okay. And here's the whole deal. Look, at, it is the size of the whole deal. And that fits the size of the Running it into me. <laughs> I mean, I just really don't want this stand. No, I don't want to go. 
Okay. Is it on? Is it on? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We're excited to be here. We are going to do a little tiny bit of history because before Pentecost, there were other events that happened on the exact same day. So we're going to see why there were so many people in Jerusalem. We're going to see why. Um, and I like connecting the old with the new. And so a little bit of history. But then, and then Mike is going to share some. And then I, I had, it's a really simple little small close, but I had a little small close that I felt like the Lord wanted me to add. So, um, say a prayer. <laughs> so, Father, we do thank you. I thank you for each person here. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. God, we cannot do anything without you. you. Apart from you, we can do nothing. So, Lord, we just are grateful that you're with us, that you're in us, and the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Yeah. We thank you, God, that we are stronger than we think we are, <laughs> and we can do more than we think we can do. So we give you thanks and we give you praise. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will connect um, all of these pieces together from ancient of days to where we are. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Okay, so we're going to start. Usually it really started with Shavuot. And actually it even started before Shavuot. It's the same thing. It means 50. And actually Shavuot is weeks, but it's seven weeks, which is 49 days plus one. So, okay, so w let's go to the next one. We're going to move really fast, Pastor Ron, because I have a bunch of slides, but we're not going to talk too much about each one. So when they first left Egypt, so we had Passover actually 50 days ago. Actually, today is the day. It almost never happens like this. It takes seven years for it to happen that a Sunday in the Gregorian calendar, the one we use, would land on the same day as what happened on the lunar calendar. But 50 days after leaving Egypt, um, they came to Mount Sinai. And there Moses went up to the mountain to meet with the Lord. One of the verses that he gave um, in the Bible says, I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So... On 50 days after le so we have we're going to see a couple of 50 days, but on 50 days after leaving Sin after leaving Egypt, the Lord called to Moses. The camp of Israel is all down below, and the camp is he's going to go up to the mountain to talk to the Lord. It says that the mountain. Let's go to the next one. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, we need like the shofars going, like a, like a thousand of them, you know, because it said it got louder and louder. And the voice of the Lord, and Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. This is an exodus. So here we see, Smoke, fire, trembling, the sound of a trumpet, louder and louder and louder with the voice of the Lord. So much so that the people were afraid. And they cleansed themselves. And on the 50th day, Moses went up. So about maybe 45 days or so. You kind of have to piece some verses together. It'll say they traveled for 40 days. And then it'll say they camped for three. Moses said, God says to Moses, consecrate the people. So you kind of add them all up. But they come up. To 50. So next slide. God had prepared tablets with instruction, and he gave them to Moses. He was wanting to make, he wanted to have a royal people, a royal family, a royal priesthood, and he wanted to call them as his own. So he gave the instructions so that they would live holy. He says, be ye holy, even as I am holy. It wasn't just to say, this is the law, you know, and you're going to do what I say do. It was so that you can be acceptable to the Lord. And it was God's heart for the people to preserve them, to lead them, that they would be his own special possession. Again, he wanted a royal people of priests and kings. Next. So then we get through Exodus and we get into Leviticus. And as they're going, every time there was an issue, um, 
Aaron was with him. Aaron was the priest, and Moses was kind of the leader. He was the leader. So every time there was a big issue, they would go to this to the Lord and say, well, what about this? And the Lord would speak to him. And then we get to Leviticus, and this is where, um, I mean, I never used to read these chapters in the Bible. I mean, it was like, ugh, you know, it was just so not easy. And then um, the Lord did something different in me where I just, it's like when I read them, I just cry because it's like God's speaking and he's speaking in really plain English. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus spoke a lot in parables. So there's stories, but a lot of it's like looking behind what he actually said. But here, I mean, the Ten Commandments is a pretty plain, don't do this do this, don't do that. So it's very direct and very, very plain. But the Lord spoke to Moses, and he gave him instructions. And it's where they gave them the feasts of the Lord. And this is like a prophetic word from God concerning the Messiah. The Lord, the Messiah, is going to fulfill every single one of these feasts. So let's go to the next one. So in Leviticus 23, he says the day after the Sabbath, which would have been um, not just Saturday. Sabbaths could be Saturday. Always it was Saturday or, you know, the seventh day. But the Sabbath is also a holy day. So every time the Bible talks about a Sabbath, it could be on a Saturday, but could it also be an appointed, consecrated day that God separated out and said this day is holy. And so Passover which was probably on a Thursday because Jesus rose on Sunday and we know that he was in the belly, he was in the, in the earth just like Jonah was in the belly of the well for three days. So he probably didn't die on Good Friday like, you know, Constantine declared. He probably died on Thursday. But all of that to say, it would have been a Sabbath because it was one of these feasts. So on the day from the Sabbath, it says, the day you bring a bundle of grain, we got a a big thingy of grain here, to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Seven full weeks is, not, is 49 days. Seven times seven is 49. Keep counting until the day after the seventh, 50 days. So we already see that God came down on the mountain and gave them the Ten Commandments on 50 days. Now we see he's given them, it's the uh, fourth feast of the Lord, and it will be fulfilled. Every one of these is, was fulfilled in the natural because they were agricultural. They didn't really understand. Even today, there's not a full understanding of what this means. I mean, they go through this every single year. It says, then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. So from wherever you live, bring two loaves of bread to be lifted up. Hold on. We have okay. two loaves of bread. Oh my, look at Yikes, this is a heavy thing. Two loaves of bread from Panera. <laughs> Two loaves of bread you're going to lift up, and then you're going to make them with choice flour. and bake. But these are baked with the yeast. This is the only offering, the only offering that the Lord al allowed people to bring with yeast. And this is the word of the Lord. It says, and they will be an offering to the Lord from the first of your crops. So today, when it's celebrated in Israel, from the slides because I have the scriptures there. But when they come today, they bring, before they have the harvest and they have the crops, but before they eat from these crops, they would bring a sample, the first fruits of that grain, to the priest. He would have a wave offering, and then, then, they, you, know, then you can eat afterwards. But you don't touch it before you eat. It's kind of like tithe. You give it to the Lord first. You don't touch it yourself until you've given the Lord. Because he says... Um, if the first is holy, it's like if the little piece is holy, then the whole lump is, is holy. So, where am I at? So, the people thought that these feasts were a way to celebrate the harvest and bring offerings to the Lord so that they would be blessed. And that's true. Every time there's a scripture given, even in the Old Testament, we might think, ah, that doesn't totally apply to me. It's a truth in that. It applied to them, but there are more spiritual truths and sometimes there's a prophetic truth that comes forth in addition to the surface natural truth. So we're going to see the fulfillment actually through the Holy Spirit. So let's go to the next one. 
So the Israelites were faithful. I mean, we're talking about serious faithful to hold to the word. And their descendants have kept the word of the Lord, and they've preserved it for people today. They've observed the Feast of the Lord every year. They observe the harvest and the instructions given to Moses and the prophets. We actually owe a great debt because all of our patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the rest that followed, all of our prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all the rest, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, all the early church believers, all the letters of Paul, our whole spiritual history is the same. So we have been grafted in. If we have accepted Jesus, we've been grafted in. Hallelujah. I mean, when they write these, these Torah scrolls, they have to have the, the, the hides and the parchment made in a certain way. If you spell something wrong, that page is discarded. If, you know, get a new bottle of ink. I mean, we're talking about meticulously keeping letter for letter, jot for jot, whatever, because the word says not one jot, not one little mark is going to, God is going to fulfill all of it. So everything has to be perfect. So let's go to the next one. So the two loaf offering, again, hold on. I almost got a plastic plate. <laughs> now I wish I had it because this one's heavy. So this was way before the Lord. And it still is, it still is um, uh, controversial, I guess is the word, on what does this mean. Um, I mean, Christians would say Old and New Testament, you know, maybe spirit and word, but um, they just do it, okay? So the Israelites, the Jews just do it. But I always think now that it's Jew and Gentile. And they'll tell you why I think that. It's because it's leavened. And nothing that was presented to the Lord. If we said the Old and two New Testaments, both of those are pure. Both of those are already the word of God. There's no sin in that. So, and spirit and word is also pure. But Jew and Gentile, all of us have come short of the glory of God. We're the only thing that is the harvest for the Lord. We're the reward of the Lord. You know, at the end of days, we're his inheritance. So let's go to the next one. I'm almost done with the Old Testament. <laughs> okay, so there are three pilgrimage feasts. There are seven feasts. And there's three where the Bible says, all of you go to Jerusalem. And the first one is Passover. So the city in, in Passover is I mean, jammed of people. The next one is this one, Shavuot, or Pentecost, 50 days after Passover. And then the last one is Feast of Tabernacles, which we sometimes do. I mean, we do usually in the fall. We say something about Feast of Tabernacles. So we set up the little booths. We say this is like living with Jesus forever and ever. So during these feasts, the Bible says, I'm di I didn't give you the verse, but it actually, oh, in Exodus, Exodus 25, it actually says, this is where you're going to celebrate it. You're not going to celebrate it at home. This is where you're going to celebrate it. So people go there, and they do celebrate it, and they celebrate the agricultural feast. Now we're going to move to the New Testament. So 3,000 years later, we had Jesus. And this, the few, next few slides are just a brief history. But he fulfilled Passover. He was crucified on Passover at the time that they slayed the Passover lambs. Let's go to the next one. Then he rose from the dead, and so he fulfilled first fruits. It says in 1 Corinthians, but each in turn, Christ, the first fruits. Then when he comes, those who belong to him. So he's saying he was the first to die and be resurrected, but everybody else is with him is going to be resurrected. First fruits. Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible says he's our, our first fruits, and we're going to follow. Yeah. So we all take hope. We are going to follow. So now let's move into Acts. So during, okay, Acts 1 says during the 40 days. So now we're counting. We're counting from Passover 50 days. You know, it's amazing. It is so amazing that what was done in the Old Testament is repeated in certain scenarios in the New Testament. I mean, you, 
this is what I'm praying. I'm the heart cry of my heart. It's like the Jews don't get the New Testament, and in many respects, Christians don't get a lot of the Old Testament. They ca it's the connection there is that their eyes, the blinders would be off of, on both sides, <laughs> and we would be the one new man. We would be the believers that they would know that we're Christians by our love. They're going to know. It's like those, you, have you ever done math or these um, graphs at school, college? You know, you have one circle here that's, this is, I'll say, Christians. The next circle is believers. There's a little piece that overlaps, and they name it something else. The Bible names it one new man. So there's going to be people on earth in, the, in, in our time that are not going to get Jesus at all. There were people in the Old Testament that did not get really God at all, you know. And then there's going to be this one new man if you believe in Jesus. Anyway, that's the side. So during the 40 days that Jesus, we'll put Jesus in there, suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles time to time. He proved to them in many ways he was really alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom. And when he was eating with them, he said, don't leave Jerusalem. So everybody's in Jerusalem. His disciples lived there, but everybody else was there too. Until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. God baptized, John baptized with water, but in a few days, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So we know from other scriptures that the Bible says, which I didn't go in here, that says that they went to the upper room and they were in one accord and they tarried there 10 days when the Holy Spirit fell. So we know that during the 40 days and then Jesus ascended and then the disciples go to the upper room and wait 10 days. So we got 50 days. So let's go to the next one. On the day of Pentecost. Now, the New Testament was written in Greek. Old Testament was written in Hebrew. That's why we get all of these different phrases. But they mean the same thing. Pente is five, I guess, cost is days. I don't know. I don't know Greek. Uh, but on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. It's starting to sound like Mount Sinai, right? It had um, the house filled where they were sitting um, with what looked like flames or tongues of fire, and they settled, appeared on each one of them. So... It happened the same day that the people were celebrating. They were Jews. They were celebrating Shavuot. <laughs> they were there in town to celebrate, you know, everybody. That God gave them the Ten Commandments. They're there to celebrate the word being given to them on Mount Sinai. And this started happening in the upper room. So let's go to the next one. I love this, this little bit here. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up on you. So here's the disciples, 120. So can you imagine? I mean, there's been a few times where I've said to God when I was so burdened for something, because I used to pray in the closet. <laughs> so I'd sit in the closet with a blanket on my head, <laughs> and I would say, God, help. And then there's been a few times where it's like, God, I am not leaving this closet until I get a word from you. If it takes me 10 minutes to hear, you know, open my ears so that I can hear. If it takes me a day, I'm sitting here. People can get their own breakfast, whatever. <laughs> I'm sitting here. But can you imagine 10 days waiting to see what God was going to give them? So here he says, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Let's go to the next one. And you will be witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Go to the next one. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, which is where we are. <laughs> We're the ends of the earth from there. Holy Spirit fell. His primary goal is to empower you, to make you a witness to do what you need. We already have the words. And you know, like I said, the Jews meticulously have tried to follow the word. But we have the word and the spirit. So let's go to the next one. The church is born. This is commonly called the day. Pentecost is commonly called the church, the day that the church was born. Because, let's go to the next one. 
the word says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. The Father's heart is that none should perish, but all should have everlasting life. It's his desire that we all be filled with the spirit, that we would not fulfill the lust of our flesh. He wants you to rise up and be all that he has in his heart for you to be. Let's go to the next one. So we got flags. We've done flags for years. It's really, it's hard to, there's so many aspects that you can focus on. We could talk about the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit. We could talk about so many things. But, you know, so, we, so we're tying in this this time. Every nation. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard this loud noise, <laughs> everyone came running and they were, were bewildered to hear their own languages be, being spoken by the believers. So not only the word says there were uh, devout Jews, devout means they actually observed. There's Jews today that don't observe the, you know, the laws of Judaism, um, which basically follow the Old Testament. But there, when it says they were devout, it means they followed God. That's people... Even if they don't have a full understanding, they're trying to do their best to follow God. I'm sure you've had friends. I used to have a friend when I worked at a place down in Monterey. I know she loved the Lord. She was a part of a denomination that I used to think, you know, I don't know, there's a lot of screwy things that they could say or do. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure you've met people. But I know from her heart she loved the Lord. She was doing everything she could to um, to make to please the Lord. At any rate, um, not only were the people living there, but as I told you, it was a command of the Lord of the Old Testament that every Jew be in Jerusalem. If you were a, man, a male and you were over 20 years old, you had to present yourself before the Lord if you were observing the laws of God. Um, so the place was full of nations. Let's go to the next one. Everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began speaking in other languages. The Holy Spirit gave them this ability. This was an Acts 2-4. So this is amazing. I don't know where Mike went, but I'm almost ready for him. <laughs> anyway, so we're equipped. Let's go to the next one. We are equipped. We are equipped with the Word and with the Spirit. We cannot fulfill the laws of God, even though God gave those laws to a group of people that he calls his own, and I believe he has a destiny and a purpose for them. He's going to remove the blinders. There's a verse that says, when the fullness of the Gentiles has come, then they are going to recognize that he is the Lord and Messiah. The Bible says, I believe it's in Romans. In Romans, God is talking to Gentiles. <laughs> In Hebrews, he's talking to Jews. But there's a verse that says in the Romans, in Romans, that if we have experienced the greatness of God when they don't understand, imagine what it's going to be when they do. <laughs> and so it's profitable for us to comfort Zion, to do our best to love and to show the glory of the Lord. So we are equipped. We are prepared to overcome. We, are, we overcome, the word says, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so we walk, we, I'm trying to read what I wrote. We walk our, our daily lives according to the leading of the spirit, not according to the flesh. There's so many times we have to actually say, I am not. I'm going to put the Bible in front of my face, and I cannot let my mind think about anything else. Because sometimes there's too much pressure and too much that's going to say to you, this is wrong or that's wrong. You have to just put the word in front of you. And so we have the fruits of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit, and we are more than conquerors through Christ. So, Mike. I'm not done. I'm coming back. <laughs> Amen. Isn't this wonderful? I hope you're taking this in. <laughs> I hope you're realizing how special what you're getting today is. You know, Roxanne has a unique uh, gift. It's been on her since she was a child, really. There's a story they tell about Roxanne when she was a little girl in the Bible school class, you know. 
And they said, uh, Roxanne, uh, what do you know about David? And she says, David who? <laughs> Her mind, which David are you talking about? The thing about what I'm trying to say is she is one of those that's very particular, very careful, and she, you know, her mind thinks that's that's why she works with numbers and she's a stockbroker and uh, all that stuff, you know. She her mind works that way where she can see those little details. And there's others of you in this room that are kind of like that too. <laughs> Tim Mitchkoff <laughs> and others that I know that they grab detail, see. And here's the thing. Now God that she's able to share and minister is using that special thing about her. That's why God picked someone like Paul the Apostle to write 13 books of the New Testament. He had a gift for this kind of thing. And so I love it when she steps up to bring the types of things that she's brought to us. I hope you appreciate all of this that she's organized and put together to help spell it out and get it clear. What a day this is. Church, uh, this is such an awesome special day, this day of Pentecost, and the things that were happening, you know, the thing that I wanted to just share, and I, I didn't have too much to add to this because, boy, she's really told you the, the whole layout, but in the uh, bulletin, you'll see the scripture again in Acts 2. And the thing I want to draw your attention to is, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. <laughs> I want you to say that, when it was fully come. Okay, it was more than just, you know, uh, spell out the fact that it's the 50th day. Yeah, it was. But it was a more fully than that. Can you say amen? Because all of the history the centuries, the time of all of these events that was being put together was culminating when this verse was saying it was fully come. That was the day that the heavens opened and that it was able to go forward. And why? Because there was missing ingredients up until that point in history. You follow? And the missing ingredient was what Jesus came and was able to accomplish on the cross. And he was the one that was able to put, you could say it this way, the icing on the cake. He was able to put the final product out there so that it was going to be finished. And that, dear ones, here we go. This is the big thing that I want you to see. On the cross, and I've said it before, I said it at, at resurrection time. He said, it is finished. And when the scripture explains in the book of Hebrews, starting about chapter 6 and through 10, in detail what these events were to be, it said, when all of these things that had been accomplished, Jesus went and sat down. Where did he go? at the right hand of the Father. And so he finished his work, and because he finished his work, the explosion was able to take place on the day of Pentecost, and tongues of fire came down, and people began to speak in other languages. Now, some theologians and other Bible scholars, they've looked at that and they've said, oh, isn't it remarkable that they spoke in all of these different languages and they think that's what happened but I don't believe that I believe if you read it carefully it says that they understood <laughs> in their language so here's the miracle the miracle of the spirit was going forth and who knows what it was sounding like who knows it was just some kind of a something you couldn't make out what it was what it what is that, what are those words? It's something like you couldn't understand at all. And here it is, it's just babbling, babbling, babbling. But they understood, and they even said it. It's in the scripture. And it's, isn't it odd, they said, that we can actually understand what these guys 
said, aren't they just Galileans? Uh, how could they be saying all of this? And yet in all of the languages, anybody from any tongue that was there could understand what was being said. Why? Because it was time for the Holy Spirit to get the message out. <laughs> he wanted them to hear. He wanted them to understand. And because of that, the miracle took place. Well, I'm getting excited here. <laughs> and when tongues are being used in, uh, among us, we don't understand what they are. They sound like baby jabber. Who knows what they are? I, in fact, my tongues change. <laughs> sometimes it sounds one way. Sometimes it sounds another way. Sometimes it's another way. And I yesterday we was talking about this. And uh, Rich Subio, okay, I'm talking to him on the phone. And he's telling me this wonderful testimony of what God is doing for him. And when he finishes, he says, now, Pastor, I want to pray for you. What's your need? And I told him my need. And he said, okay, I'm going to pray for you. Now, he's, he's still over there in the hospital facility, and he's talking to me on the phone. And he says this, I'm going to pray for you. So he starts praying for me. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> He breaks out in tongues, and he starts praying in the Holy Spirit, you see, right then and there over the phone for me. And I had to tell Roxanne about it, and I said, that is not the same Rich Subia that I met years ago when I performed the wedding for his little Lisa. And it was way back, even in a different church years ago. In fact, that girl's got babies that are grown and off, you know. And and Rich Subia was a gangster. I'm gonna tell you what he was. Uh, he, he he was uh, he was a character and a half. And I have to tell you, Fred, I, I I some of those characters that came with you guys that day. I'm thinking, man, these guys are some roughnecks. These guys, I don't know if I'd want to be in the back alley around these guys. They're pretty rough looking. I'm just being honest. <laughs> they were rougher than me. I'm you know I'm a I'm a lily <laughs> compared to some of these guys. And, and here's this same guy whose life has been so totally transformed. And one Saturday, we're sitting in here, you see, and all these years have gone by. And uh, Pastor Rich uh, Adams was here with us. I don't know if you were here that day or not. Some of you might have been. And the Holy Spirit started to move. See, there's ones when the Holy Spirit starts to move. It's like on the day of Pentecost, you can't control what's going to go on. <laughs> it's going to be spontaneous. It's going to be something that's going to happen. You can't explain it after it's all over with. But Rich said, we said, um, anybody want to receive the Holy Spirit and be able to... Uh, get your prayer language and be filled with the Spirit. And he, yes, he said, I do. I prayed several times for that. So we got our, gathered around him, and uh, David, you were there, and we prayed over him, <laughs> and all of a sudden, it happened. And he started speaking in tongues. And then later, he said, I kind of embarrassed myself. He says, was that all right, what I'm doing? And he said, you know, Pastor Mike, it started happening to me at home. I prayed with Mary, and all of a sudden, I couldn't control it. It, it started coming out of me. I said, that's because it's the real deal. <laughs> and when he prayed for me the other day over the phone, it happened again. And I'm, I'm rejoicing, and it's bringing tears to my eyes because this guy is changed. He's not the same guy. <laughs> Fred, you know what I'm talking about. He's a different guy today. <laughs> Why? It's the power of the Holy Spirit, dear ones. And Roxanne is going to come back. That's basically what I wanted to say to you. Okay, I have a few more pictures. Okay, so what I have left is really short. Um, but it's kind of like what I really felt like the Lord... Um, was saying to us and actually Mike kind of finished his sermon last week with the same two words two words we're going to look at a couple pictures but it's really two words and so I'm making space up here because it's my heart that anybody who needs prayer or wants prayer gets prayer 
And so we're equipped with the word and the spirit with the word and the spirit and God is saying, Rise up. Rise up. You know, there's times I go and get Lucas up. Not very often, but he's hard to wake up. And I go and say, Lucas, you know, it's seven fifteen or it's seven o'clock, get out of bed. And he's got like six alarm clocks or something. And then there's other times I go in there like 10 minutes later and I said, get out of bed. You know, you're not going to have any time. And I felt like the Holy Spirit is saying to us, get up, get up, rise up. So we, I know all of you are walking through all kinds of mud and heartache and health and you name it. We are walking through stuff. But let's go to the next one. The same spirit or power that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. And we must agree with the word which was given first and move forward in the spirit (laughs) which was given second. We cannot agree with the enemy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you've ever felt accused, if someone has come against you, and there's times when you just say, this isn't even this person. <laughs> only this, only the enemy. This is the enemy. Let's go to the next one. God says, rise up. <laughs> we are moving into the last days, and there's going to get harder and harder times. And if we don't wake up and say, I cannot relax in the spirit. I might rest, as Mike says, in the Lord, but I cannot relax in the spirit realm. Let's go to the next one. Where there's two or three gathered together in my name, there I am. I love to go to a conference where there's hundreds because it's so easy because everybody's broken up the fallow ground. Everybody's praying through. You got a thousand people there, you know, chomping at the enemy. And it's easy to chomp at the enemy. But he says where there's two and three. So we have to connect. I love Gloria's text every day because it's just a li- it's like a, a blow on that day, you know. So we want to bear up each other's burdens, and we want to comfort each other. Let's go to the next one. We have to read the word. We have to arm ourselves. We have to know the word. We have to keep our mind in the word. Read the word. Listen to CDs. Text your friends. Encourage each other. Let's go to the next one. We have to gather together. We keep iron sharpens iron. We have to keep prodding each other to be together and to um, share what God has been saying to you that morning or that night. You, if you walk with someone, you know what's going on there. And so you can say, I mean, I know Gloria enough. I know she's got health things that she's battling every day. Some days a little better, but it's a constant. So when you walk with someone, Mike has had health struggles. I mean, it's like, God, you know, <laughs> help. <laughs> You know, we need the Lord, and so we need each other. And so the next one, I will rise up. I will not be defeated. My champion is Jesus Christ. And the last one, we all need to rise up. Rise up. And so we're going to pray for people. I'm going to go to the piano. Mike is going to take over again. But we're going to rise up. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord, Mike ended last week with rise up. I don't know how, but he did. Yes, amen. So we're going to pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, we come before you and we ask, Lord, that you will allow us now to enter in. Lord, that we will press in lord that we will not be denied but lord we will come before you today to say yes this is the hour of the visitation this is the day of the lord this is the time that my faith is going to rise up to the occasion and stand strong for the need that we have and we're believing you for it lord and we're taking it by faith in jesus name can you say amen church Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I also want to just welcome any of those of you here that want to say a word or have a word to say or share or to stand with us and and pray. But first thing is let's just rise to our feet and let's prepare our hearts right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 
in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to receive from you. This is your time. This is your day. We want what you have for us, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to just take a moment. Is there someone right now that has a particular need, a situation, or a word that you feel that the Lord is calling on you to share or or you have a need you want us to pray with you about in particular? Yes. Um, I, I've been going through it. <laughs> uh, my husband, uh, just he's got uh, emphysema and um, just COPD. And man, every day it's something else. And it's just been a battle, a battle, a battle. And uh, one thing that I just feel like the Lord keeps reiterating to me that I, I just see it everywhere and it's yeah. just like it's become like everywhere I look I see it and I'm like okay I get the message Lord and I feel like what he's saying to the body is start believing me for bigger things I feel like that we've reduced him down to the to a man you know to to a man like oh well he can do this but he, he can't do that and I just over and over I've seen that just Begin to believe him for bigger things. Believe him for mighty things, things that God, and this morning, the, what I felt like he was speaking to me uh, through a song was about moving a mountain. He can move a mountain. I mean, you know, we need to begin to see those mountains in our lives as molehills, you know. Amen, uh, amen. Through the Lord, he amen. can do anything. And we need to begin today, just be begin to believe him together as a body and as one to believe him for those bigger things let's Amen. get together with uh, the body of Christ and just join together and just begin to press in and just begin to believe him for those things Amen. 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 Amen you know one thing I wanted to say and then we're gonna uh, move forward here with this but as you were saying those words one of the things that came in my spirit is release Yes. Release. That was the word kept in my heart. Release. Release. And these are things that we have to turn loose of the things we've thought in our head. You know, yes. and it has hindered us. And we have to release it into the dimension of where God can work in that situation. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pastor Mark, did you want to say a word before we minister over here? Okay.